You know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, if true, I need not say any more. Welcome to Lanark Golf Club, and this is why I do what I do. I've lost count of how many golf courses I've played over the last few years, and I hope to continue this journey of discovery. Off the beaten track has led me to some of the most incredible places, meet incredible people and gave myself and my channel a new purpose. That purpose is to help golf clubs who might be sometimes overlooked but are deserving of the limelight. It's falling sideways. Oh my God, he's made it. We should have had a camera that way to just see how much break that is. Well, this is one of those very courses I've just described and uh, I came here last evening, took a walk around and I've got a feeling this could be Scotland's hidden gem, finest hidden gem that I'm yet to discover. I only heard about Lanark Golf Club in recent months and that's largely due to the efforts made by the club to produce high quality content for social media. Now, I hope I can share with you what it was that caught my eye and got me here. Oh, well, that's another bogey on the card, I'm afraid, and there's, there's been a few, but uh, the course itself is a bit of an update through. I think that was seven holes. Is that first little greens you can probably see from the screen that are rolling so, so pure, look incredible. Definition from tee to green, again, is stunning in terms of the visual, but it's also a tough old routine. There's a couple of long par fours in that opening stretch of those seven holes, and I've certainly got uh, perhaps a few more bogeys on my card than I would like, but oh my word. I don't care too much because when you look back at the views, this place is stunning. Only seven holes in. Oh, made our way to the 11th tee and uh, to be honest with you we've gone out very early in front of uh, what is a medal round and between them and the green staff we're trying to dodge in between so I'm not talking and showing you perhaps as much as I like but we've got loads caught on camera of just how good this place is and that previous par three um, bit of drone footage for you now our absolute belt in golf hole but maybe more importantly this sort of position furthest away from the clubhouse I think uh, around 10 and 11 is so, so quiet. And uh, as Pat Ruddy said, which I keep quoting, it's uh, a time to smell the roses and just chill for a bit. I've just teed off as well, hit a decent forward down there. Hole really narrows up by the looks of things. And uh, yeah, we're in good nick. But this is all about, as well as being just an amazingly good golf course and a real discovery, in my opinion, it's just so tranquil and uh, my type of golf, I love life out here in uh, such quiet and pretty settings. This is one of the oldest golf clubs in the world and it is the oldest inland course that remains on its original land. In 1897 at a cost of £3.10, shillings, old Tom Morris was employed to lay out 18 holes and in 1927 James Braid supervised the construction of several new holes to produce the basic layout which, with the exception of longer tees and modern bunkering, 
remains largely unchanged to this day. Lanark Golf Club can be found south of both Glasgow and Edinburgh and probably just an hour's drive to each of those major cities. From what I can see, the most you'll ever pay to play Lanark is a £70 green fee, which is in the peak times of the main season. Well, we'll just wait for the green staff just to finish this next tee box on, uh, what's that, 12 or 13 now, I don't know. And uh, discovering a course like this for me is what this whole thing has been about. And I love travelling and finding new golf courses. Whilst I like being a member of somewhere and, and getting some, you know, familiarity with a place, I love finding a new course and finding somewhere that's really decent and then being able to share it with you as an audience is, uh, is just what my channel's all about. And then if I get to find out that any of you ever watch a video and then go to play one of the golf courses because you've seen it on the channel, well then uh, I'm a happy man. I feel like I'm doing my bit towards promoting golf. And after all, I mean, that's what this is all about, isn't it? could be good if it's the right yardage it's all over it sit it's probably been about the best part of my game today has been my wedges I've struggled a bit off the tee pulling a bit left and this is a typical hole where I could have been uh, in the longer stuff through not quite understanding the layout and it's a course I'd definitely love to play again uh, with a better understanding of where I should be what clubs I should use off the tee and that kind of says to me that it's very much that thinking man's course again where I love the fact that you don't just bash driver, you have to plot your way around and try and find the angles to come in. I've got a good angle in here, but uh, like I said, a few yards further to my left and I'd have been in a bit of trouble, but I've got a birdie chance. Well, one of the main features of the golf course is without doubt the greens and one because of the condition of them, they're fantastic as you can see. But the other thing is the movement in them, they're all fairly substantial in size, but there's a huge amount of movement. And I've just hit a little chip shot, not the greatest, come up short and I'm on a wrong tier and all of a sudden the difficulty of this putt is uh, well, far different than if I'd have managed to get another 10 yards or so with the wedge. Oh, that's a decent pace, it's not bad, but every green has been the same and I can imagine they can have some real fun with the pin positions. So uh, getting your ball from tee to green is one part, but then getting in the hole, that's, uh, that's another challenge. That's okay, but it'll be a long way on the second one because uh, the 15th is a par four stroke two, 445 yards off the yellows, which has uh, forced me to get the driver out, but I'll still have a, a good couple of hundred or so more. And there's been a few of them, a few long par fours, and we're actually into a bit of draft as well. So that's a, a tough start to the finishing stretch on 15. Although the sun was starting to fade, the 16th was one of my favorite holes. Maybe because I hit a decent tee shot. A lovely par four from a slightly elevated tee. Fairway bunkers await and a burn runs in front of a small target. I read that Lanark is often compared favorably with the King's course at Glen Eagles. Offering a similar mall and challenge set in a wonderful scenic countryside and it's easy to understand the parallels. Lanark is a great layout on a mall and setting that is in incredibly good condition from tee to green. Those greens roll true. The course has a charm and character, gorse, treescapes, 
wildlife and colour with far-reaching views. Scotland is blessed with so many courses to choose from, but often you'll play a course based on reputation or media exposure. And there are so many courses that do not get the recognition they deserve. I don't believe any course should want a title of being a hidden gem. Although I might selfishly choose to keep them a secret myself, I feel it's my duty to share with you the courses I find when off the beaten track. And you know what, the plan seems to be working. I'm meeting more and more people who say they've been inspired to travel and go and visit a golf course because they've seen it on the channel. And for me, there couldn't be anything better, as I've already mentioned. I also got to say that a lot of people come up and stop and say hello, and uh, I love that. It's, uh, it's really humbling when somebody, you know, actually meet somebody that watches the channel. It makes it all the more real. Anyway, that's another day done. Uh, it's been a busy old week, done a lot of traveling and uh, gonna make our way home. And I think we've discovered, like I said, one of Scotland's finest hidden gems. It's, uh, I don't think it'll stay hidden for too much longer.